In our last episode, we travelled up to the Mwene Game Reserve to visit a friend of ours, Terry, made up some stick bread, a kebab fondue, and then the next day headed up to the Wild Coast to recharge our batteries. I have to ask myself, when did life and food become about instant satisfaction? About self-service TV dinners, the 15-minute microwave roast chicken, chocolate mousse in a box, money for love and love for money? Instead of the sublime importance of friendships, of weekends away, sunshine, and the great outdoors. So now all things aside, welcome to Cooked, to my life. about episode 7 is I'm bringing you to a place I've been coming to for the last 20 years and I'm bringing all my friends here for some of them it's their first time out here and it really is such a special place like to run into heaven Life in paradise. You look behind you and see the most stunning view in the most chill place in our beach. Across to that next stretch. It's about a hundred meters until we hit somewhere. Luck out! You'll talk to your grandparents about this. This is like how they went through Africa in the old days. Barefoot, Kokoi, how? The next spotted shoe trundling through this jungle. Just that he's taking us to the dunes. Forgot to mention that we need shoes or a shirt because we're walking through nettle. But hey, it's an adventure. Well, you see where we've come from.
Two o'clock lunch turned into a four o'clock lunch and the wind came up and our beautiful sets got blown away in the wind. So we had to move here, but in any case, got to feed the guys quickly. So Gary is going to fillet the fish, I'm going to wash these and then we're going to cook up some stuff for the guys. For you today, we would have stopped. Thank you. Right, so we finished filleting the fish now. So all we've got to do is put it in the grid and cook it. Pretty simple. A little bit of salt. By the way, this is Gareth Matt Beaumont, celebrity chef on Cook for this episode. Just check him out, man. The most complicated meal you've ever seen made in your life. Okay, I just want to put a bit of olive oil in the bottom so it doesn't stick. We're going to attempt a never before attempted dish with me, which is fish and banana leaves. We just read about it, never done it. Gareth was supposed to tell me how to do it, and he ran away. So now, what we're going to try and do is make a parcel. The first thing I'm going to do is spice a little bit up with some um, capers and some olives and some salt. And then I'm going to try and bake it in the banana leaves in cream. I'll we'll just have to check out how it happens. Jeez, Gareth, that's smelling awesome already. Hungry, hungry, hungry. All of us. <laughs> so now I'm just breaking the olives a little bit, just to get their juices out. A little bit of hard saltiness, and then the capers are exactly the same. They're going to be that sharp, salty taste. Now I'll show you what I'm going to do, Gareth. Just lift the fish and slide him underneath. And then down that way a bit. Now what we're going to do is try and create a parcel with cream inside. You guys are going to have to help me probably a bit here too, just to keep it. Yeah, I'm going to get another leaf, I'll show you now. Oh, some garlic would be grand, eh? I'm just bruising it up because I just want the flavour. All I'm going to do is tuck this one in and roll him up a bit. First one this way. No, I won't do that one that way. That's So I was too busy helping Dustin with the banana leaves, so I nearly, nearly cremated the first half of the, of the meal, but it's perfect as it is. Only one over the top, guys. It's a 
want to ask where you managed to find it. Ah, oh, art department geniuses. Are you tying a bow? Yes. It's in wire. In wire. <laughs> never it's before. Annoying. Never before in my life. It's just as a matter of interest, it's not mineral water, that is seawater. Um, isn't it ironic that a restaurant will spend all this money trying to make something taste of the sea? All you have to do is what we've just done. So this is for Mr. Beaumont. We caught our lunch. Oh, that goes well with my sister. Yeah. Fantastic. Come on, let's get this, get this done. I'm not calling you a second time, otherwise there'll be none left. Just going to put this one on back. Now, what should happen, though, is the cream inside the banana leaves should protect it from burning through the banana leaf and then just poach it up inside with all those flavors of the olives and the capers. So we'll leave that for about 10, 15 minutes and let everyone have a tucker in this side. Out here. I was waiting for you guys to be ready. Now see what happens, it blackens through completely. A couple of seconds this side and then we can serve it up. And then what we're gonna do is ask Chris who tied the beautiful little bows in the wire to somehow undo the little beautiful bows in the wire. Hopefully he was like, oh, did he have it? Yeah. We're about ready to um, open it up. Right, it's been about 20 minutes and it's uh, time to eat. Beautiful fish. The freshly caught mussel cracker a la Gareth. With a whole tub of cream, a whole whack of capers, a whole whack of olives, and some whole cracked garlic. And then it's baked on the fire. And it couldn't get more simple. And it couldn't taste. I don't think it could taste much better. I'll catch you another one if you want. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Um, if you don't have a plate, you can use a banana leaf, by the way. And we don't have plates. <laughs> Hang on, John. Keep them for Penny and John.
I catch another one, please? No, we've got to cook up the other one. I need another one. No. Or later. It's cool. 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 And as the sun started setting, it was time for us to head on home, have a little dinner after our long day in the sun. Right, now that we've come back from our fantastic day down on the beach and stuff, we've got to use up the rest of the fish we've caught. So what we're going to do is make up a little tempura batter and fry these numbers up and eat them with a sweet chili sauce and stuff. It's going to be awesome. The one I'm going to do tonight is one that Penny suggested using eggs, which I've never done before, but I reckon it's going to be quite interesting. So I'm going to start off with corn flour. Again, equal amounts of corn flour to self-raisin flour or normal flour. About half-half. It's going to make a really pucker meal in it. And then the, the interesting part is I'm going to use eggs to form the batter. The first part I'm going to do is take out the egg whites and whisk them up and chuck the yolks in that side. I don't do this as nicely as Fran does it, do I? Huh? I'm a little bit more rustic. Cool. I must just tell you, everyone else right now, it's just the camera crew and guys around here. The rest of them are all having showers and kipping and falling asleep. And so now what we've got to do, guys, is just mix this up a little bit. What I'm going to do next is whisk up the egg whites and then fold it into this. And what's going to happen is that it's going to be really a light, fluffy flavor to go with this awesome tasting mussel cracker. And in this, we're going to whisk until it's all fluffy. Now, this is going to take quite a while, so I might have to find a slave just now. OK, you want to carry on whisking there for me so I can stand here and do nothing? <laughs> Check, I've got it worked out perfectly. Makes it nice and fluffy, darling. Well, I'm going to get the gas cooker going in the meantime. And yes, I would like some wine. You want to see my beautiful tan? It ends here. And then there's nothing else underneath. That's all the new gashes and things we have from today. That looks brilliant, baby. Yeah. You're going to stand here and keep me moral support? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. What if you She stood on my toe. So now, what we have to do is fold this in a little bit at a time. You know how to fold stuff in, huh? Yeah. Now it's still a bit thick, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of milk just to thin it out before I fold the rest of the egg white in. A little bit at a time. I mean, it's got to be a batter at the end of the day. Pretty much like a pancake batter. Hard work. And I'm just going to fold the rest of the egg white in. Slowly. I hope the guys outside are going to appreciate what I'm doing for them in here, sweating away like this. Look how rich and creamy that's looking. I think we're about ready, Ash. This is a very messy part of the job, no? Lovely part of the job. Well, if you turn them in, I'll just keep frying them in. They're looking awesome. John Paul, he didn't get any of the bustle cracker today, so he'd like you to come and have some now. And Penny, and Penny, and Candy. Get Candy here too. We can give you all little tasters. Come around this side to me here. Come, don't be shy. Now, guys, we have a little bit of a sweet dipping, sweet chili dipping sauce for you here. Please help yourself. Yeah, um... Mm. That is jolly fine. Thank you, John. John, come in here. 
Come on, let's go. Crack it like this, eh, hey, George? Oh, that's wonderful. I do, man. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, all that's left to do is fry up the last bit of the last bit of the whole whack of muscle cracker here and the last of these. Take it outside to the guys in the fire and have a beautiful bonfire out there tonight. I've like been blessed with another gorgeous day. Yeah, that's about it. So you guys can finish off these, and then Gareth, we've got to do the main stuff for everyone else. Back to work. Oh, back to work. Yeah. Daily grind. And I like this daily grind. Just a quick warning, folks. We're all professional fire players, and what you're about to see, you shouldn't attempt unless you're a professional. 